Hello guys, Omni here. It's that time of the week to pick back up with Batwoman now that it's back from its short little hiatus. We got our, we left off on our cliffhanger last time with Alice and Beth both collapsing to this screeching uh, frequency-like noise in their heads. Um, you know, I kind of speculated it was what that might be, so before we get into it, uh, if you haven't seen last night's episode, be sure to tune out and come back once you have. So we're going to go ahead and dive into spoilers right about now. So, as I thought... And it's not like I'm patting myself on the back for this because I feel like it was pretty obvious. And I'm not sure if the other shows are going to stay consistent with this because we have seen doppelgangers coexisting in Supergirl at the Alien Bar. Uh, so I, I want to make sure that uh, I'm curious to keep an eye open to see if this stuff kind of maintains this consistency and isn't like a writing structure problem specific to Batwoman. But... The excuse for that is exactly what I thought. Uh, the Earth is rejecting the existence of two Alices. Since the CW known multiverses have been consolidated into the Earth Prime, the idea, this is kind of what happened in the comics as well. They ha could not have multiples of the same person existing at the end of uh, Crisis until later that the multiverse was reborn. Uh, but that was well after the event. So in this, Basically, it comes down to one of them is going to have to die. One of, one of them is going to have to go. And while the longer they're together, they coexist, the, the, more they, the faster they will deteriorate. They're killing each other, basically, because the way they explain it is like they are pulling from the same life pool. So they're quickly draining each other's remaining time. Uh, so for some, somehow, I don't know what that equates to because... It only ends up with them having seven hours before they completely both disintegrate. I don't know how that math equates to them losing that much time, or if that was literally just, we need to have a timer on the clock. Um, so they're trying to figure out ways to figure out how to slow it down, how to halt, halt, how to halt it, how to stop it, how to save both Alice and Beth. Um, but they're really not coming up with a couple of options. There's a couple of quick references to Mr. Freeze and what he did for his wife in this episode, but that they kind of plotted out that, that wouldn't really stop anything. Um, they, they have, we know perfectly well, and even before Crisis on Infinite Earths, Bowen was still on Earth 1, so there's like no reason she can't call Star Labs or John or somebody to be like, you guys got any ideas? Uh, we got a situation, but they, they just kind of pass off all of their like contact lists in like a throwaway sentence and they, nobody addresses it after that. And I know they do that a lot in these shows just to keep the tensions high, but you can't just not acknowledge that one when Arrow's done it, when Flash has done it, and it's an option that is just right there. And it was like, at least if they didn't have an idea, at least have a throwaway line, be like, we reached out, they don't know. I don't know. <laughs> While they're all trying to figure that out, we got a couple of side stories going on here with Jacob in prison. Uh, we got an opening scene to the episode where him and Sophie are talking to this plastic surgeon and kind of have trying to get him to corroborate their story on the possibility of somebody makeshifting a mask out of, uh, you know, leftover dead skin. And he just uh, passes off, waves it off as uh, science fiction, but he is in interested in like talking to Mouse, this person who is supposedly the one that did it. During this whole thing, Ma uh, Alice breaks into the hospital to try to get Mouse out. And it's when she goes in there, she, he, she learns about from him that there's a doppelganger of her walking around out there somewhere. And at that point, she kind of decides she's going to figure that out before she figure, releases Mouse. So she leaves him there because I guess she's just like, I can come and get you anytime. I need to figure this out because she's like bleeding from her ears and all this stuff. So she goes and easily finds them at Wayne Tower and where she confronts herself. And they kind of talk about the differences between them, what made them different and how she Beth can empathize with her and understand her pain and all that stuff. And it's during this kind of back and forth that when Kate shows up to find them both, they she lets it slip. It was like, how did everything end here? I mean, there was a car crash, right? What happened there? And that's where it's revealed to Alice that in the other Earth, Kate had made the decision to save her and was successful. Whereas our Kate didn't go back into the car 
and everything that happened to Alice happened to Alice. So it is, it puts it even more that everything that happened to her is really kind of falls back onto Kate's fault. And, you know, Alice tries to kill Beth. She, Kate stops her, but then Alice, of course, leaves. Um, trying to figure things out. She goes to Mary trying to figure out a cure because she's got this idea that maybe the the cure-all magic rare flower that she used to cure the uh, poison that she gave both Catherine and uh, Mary at the, a couple episodes ago might be strong enough to at least give her a physiological edge over the thing. So whoever can last the longest or whoever dies first will pretty much be the one that stays. So they, she thinks that might, you know, clear that up. Mary, of course, refuses because why wouldn't she? Until Alice knocks her out, get, takes the blood for herself, but Mary manages to get the upper hand on her after and tie her up to the thing. And she's like, if anybody's getting my blood, she handcuffs her to one of the, the medical beds. She's like, if anybody's getting this blood, getting this cure, it's going to be Beth, the one who deserves it. <laughs> so it all comes down to this decision that Kate has to make. But while, meanwhile, Alice is just in arm's length enough to reach the phone back at Mary's uh, clinic and calls the crows and tells them where Alice is. Alice being Beth. And calls them, lets them know. And the SWAT team, everybody arrives at Wayne Tower and is just barreling into the building and pretty much it forces Kate at, uh, pretty much forces Kate, Beth and Luke to retreat down into the, uh, the bat cave and therefore revealing, you know, that in this earth, Kate is Batwoman to Beth, which that's not going to matter. You know, obviously what's going to happen at the, towards the end of this episode is going to happen at the end of the episode. There was no way they were going to both be sticking around, but, um, we learn in a flash over back to Mouse that the, the plastic surgeon that was talking to Jacob comes in, talks to him, and he reveals straight up that he's Mouse's father. Whenever Mouse and Alice had turned on him, they thought they killed him, but he had faked his death, uh, used the same technique that he was trying to perfect on Mouse to become a different person, take a different life, and reap all the rewards of his research in this second life of his and you know and he wants to kill Alice for taking his son away from him he's blaming everything that happened between uh on Alice and her involvement in what happened there um so he's trying to get the information from Mouse where she is but of course Mouse is loyal to Alice because he was the abuser and Alice was the pretty much the only thing that he could latch on to to keep himself sane too in the same situation. So their bond is much greater than his father and son relationship. But uh, whether or not he was going to give the answers willingly, doesn't matter. He gets drugged and his father gets those answers. And he also takes him out of the hospital. Um, Mary manages to get to Kate and give her the cure. And she's like, ah, you got to pick one of them. You got to pick one of them. So, and she chooses. She gives it to Beth, which is clearly the obvious choice between the two. And she goes to meet uh, Alice back at the clinic where she's still chained up to have kind of comfort her as she passes. Really kind of sad when you kind of think of it, but she, I mean, she is like a sick dog you just got to put down. And, you know, she does. And she comforts her in that moment. And the plan is, as... Luke is going to get Beth out of the city, at least until they clear up the crow problem. Otherwise, they'll just kill her. Uh, as the crow, while they're driving out, you know, the crows spot them and like, uh, these two suspects on a bike, uh, it might be Alice. Mouse's father hears that over this CB radio where he's kind of tuned into the crow's radio frequency and he goes that after him. And it ends where they think they're safe. Luke stops, drops off Beth. They're talking it out, hugging it out before they say they're parting ways. And perched up on a roof somewhere is Mouse's father with a sniper rifle and just shoots her. Shoots her right then and there. Kills her. Because in that moment, right as Alice is about to breathe her last breath, because she's the only Alice again at this point, she snaps right back to life, realizes that Kate betrayed her and let her die, chose the other Beth over her, and she is not having it. So it, she grabs a tray within reach and just knocks Kate out, and that's where the episode ends. So 
I really like the episode. I like the tension in this. I like how it kind of, we kind of knew it was going to happen. We knew it was going to play out this way. We weren't going to keep both of them. And there's no way that they were going to keep this other Earth Beth around uh, in place of Alice. I kind of thought maybe we might get away for a little bit longer with them coexisting. Because like I said, this hasn't, we haven't seen this play up or come up in the other uh, the other shows just yet. We haven't seen this concept kind of play out. So it's not really something I thought was going to be on the table. I mean, it's what happened in the comics to an extent. Um, but they kind of was like, well, no, we're doppelgangers or whatever. We'll just have them all stay here. Um, so I guess something's got to play out like that in the long runs, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, if the other shows even address it, which Flash, I think, is going to. So if you haven't seen last week's episode, there's a definite nod to a direction to resolve that kind of issue that comes up at the end of the episode. They're definitely teasing that there's going to be something coming with that. Um, but in this, uh, I'm curious to see how this all plays out. I'm, ex I'm really kind of curious to see how the relationship with Alice, Mouse, and Kate is going to go from this point onward, especially now that Mouse's father is back in the mix, how that's going to come together with their whole dynamic. Are they going to have to unify against him now? Uh, what's going to happen there? Uh, how is this relationship dynamic going to be between Kate and Alice at this point? Because we already knew that Alice has pretty much burned her bridges at this point. And even so, she still had that hope that Kate was still going to do the right thing by her and choose her in all these situations, not really give up on her. She ne always expected Kate to really kind of hang on to it on some level. But I'm curious to see if, if that bridge is now burned for her, knowing that in a life and death situation, she did not choose her. I, I really want to see how that's going to play out, that dynamic. That's the one thing I really like about this show, at least, is the character dynamics and the relationships, primarily between our two Canes, Beth and Kate. So, Alice, Rachel Scarsden is just the star of this show. I know it's headlined and stars Ru Ruby Rose, you know, Batwoman, Kate Kane, but I, I really think this is Alice's show. To me, because she her performances are always on point. Her motivations are the most interesting. Her characterizations, her performances are just always just so fun to watch. Also, the show is no it's not like season eight level arrow, but it's also got some of the better hand to hand choreography out of the remaining shows that we have left. Um, so it has its pluses and I really like where it's going a lot of the things that it's explored. And I'm really curious to see where this sets us up and where this puts us into going through the later half of the season. I'm not sure how many episodes. I think it's got a normal like 20, 21-ish, 22-ish, 20, low 20-ish 20 kind of count for the total season total from what I remember for the order for the season one. Uh, so I'm curious to see how this whole thing's going to come to a close. Are we going to always have Alice around? Like what... We got to get some more blood in here. And I'm curious to see what they're going to do with that on the backhand of half of this. So I don't know. What did you guys think of the episode? What do you think of how they concluded this storyline with Beth, Alice, the doppelgangers, the multiverse coming to a close in this? Um, how, what do you think is going to happen? What are your theories, your expectations? Leave those down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts so we can carry on that conversation after the video. If you guys like this video, as always, support the channel by liking, commenting, subscribing. I really appreciate you guys. And thank you all for tuning in, and I will catch you guys next week in our next wrap-up of Batwoman. Take care, everybody.